Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Generic Garage. It has been quite a while since I uploaded my last video. I'd say probably a year, if not more. And a lot's happened for me in 2023, both good and bad. But we are back, and we are on a new build. When we left off last time, we were working on the Ranger. We got it running. Nothing has happened with the truck since we last left it, but uh, it's still going good. I think I blew a remote oil filter line somehow. I started the truck up the other day after it was sitting for about six months and it, uh, it started just throwing oil out one of the lines. Sitting here beside me is an early 90s Ford Taurus show. The V6 in it puts out about 220 horses and 200 foot-pounds of torque at 6,000 RPMs, and that makes it a pretty nice powerhouse. These cars were front-wheel drive, not real-wheel drive, which would have been much better if you ask me, but because of the power plant that's in here and the way it's set up, it makes for an awesome transplant into a number of other vehicles. One of the issues with this car is that you cannot rebuild the transmission for these things. They no longer make the synchronizers and rebuild kits for them. So once your transmission blows up on these things, that's it, you're done. You either find a new transmission or you happen to come across a rebuild kit that somebody's gonna charge you an arm and a leg for and probably won't be willing to let go. But we do have another good transmission sitting in the back seat of this thing. The idea here is we're gonna take this car, drop the whole power plant, subframe, wheels, transmission, everything out of the front end. And then sitting behind the camera over there, I'll show you here in a second, is another car that we're gonna put all of that into. All right, so sitting over here about 30 feet away from the Ford Taurus show, we have a Ford Festiva. I believe this is an 89 or a 90, somewhere in there. You take that car and this car and you put them together and you get a Ford Shogun. Ford made, I think, seven of these originally from the factory, but back in the day, you could buy a Corvette for the same price. I think Jay Leno has two of these things. You can find his videos on YouTube about his Shogun. And uh, well, we're, we're gonna try to put one together ourselves. It's, it's a pretty big undertaking. I've never done anything like this before. I've got a 3D scanner. We got the 3D printer. We're gonna probably pick up some more tools along the way, a tube bender. We gotta make a roll cage for this thing. Maybe an arc droid for cutting out brackets and whatnot. But we have a lot of work to do. So the first thing we're gonna get started with today is moving the Ford Taurus show into the garage and trying to get that whole front subframe with the engine transmission, everything out of there and just see what we're working with. Take some 3D scans of both that and the back of this car. We gotta cut the whole back of this thing out, the whole back seat comes out. And you take that whole front subframe and engine and everything and you just shove it right under the back end of this car. And uh, that, that should make a pretty quick, fun little car. I haven't seen any of these running around in real life. You can find pictures of them online and like I said, Jay Leno's got a few of them. I don't think we're gonna turbo it. I think we're gonna pull that motor and see if we can't do a compression test just to make sure it's all good. See if we maybe can get it fired up, I don't know. The rest of this day is gonna be pretty much dedicated to tearing that car down. We're gonna leave this one right where it is until we have all that stuff scanned in the computer. So I guess let's fire up a lawnmower or something and hook some chains up to it and see if we can't push this thing into the garage and get it located on the lift. a lot of fun got it up on the lift and what do we find when we got under here there's the oh yeah I don't think we'd be rebuilding that transmission anyway <laughs> trying to get a good view on it what are we looking at what is that that's the diff blew the case right out at, right at one of the mounts 
Wow. Detonated. Probably some internal parts can be used. Yeah, if the if the synchronizers and everything on the inside of the actual transmission over here is still good, those might be some good backup parts in case we need something, anything, for the other transmission. But as far as I know, I picked up that other transmission from a guy in Washington on Craigslist and he shipped it to me years ago. And it's just been sitting in the back seat, so we'll have to get that out. Leaked all over the seat, man. <laughs> this thing's uh, seen better days. Looks like you said, like he bottomed out the frame here a couple times. Possibly, can't tell for certain. Yeah, that or just jacking it up on the wrong point, like I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's pretty rough under here. I think we should uh, maybe listen to some other YouTubers that we watch, like uh, Vice Grip Garage and see if we can't get a a wrench or a only thing i see leaking is the oil pan yeah everything else is dry yeah it could be valve covers leaking down or something or a uh, gasket that's the oil pan hopefully it's not cracked or anything yeah i think we'll get a, a socket and a ratchet on there and see if we can make sure the motor at least turns over and Pray it's not seized up. yeah maybe maybe we could try to get it started that'd be hilarious i got a battery over there I got a starter fluid. <laughs> I don't know that it'll start being that this is so messed up. I don't know if that has anything to do with the flywheel or not. I don't think that's it does. That's not the flywheel. That might be a speed cog. I think that's something. part of the diff right there. Sure. All right. Well, let's see if we can get that motor to spin over by hand. Oh yeah, that spins. See if we can get one revolution. <laughs> well, the motor ain't seized up. That's good news. That's very good news. It's going. That's a half a turn. It's getting a little tight. I'm starting to undo that bolt, I think. Should probably go the other way. Probably a compression stroke or something. Yeah. You know what? We're gonna call that good, not seized. Well, let's go battery straight to the starter. That's on you, pal. Nah, we need to check and see if there's oil in there first or not. I guess let's get this thing on the ground and see if we can't get the hood off. So we tried to prop the hood up and we were getting ready to pull the bolts on the hood, but then we realized that I'd probably done that already before because there wasn't any bolts on the hood. So that was nice. Just picked it up and set it on top of the car. I don't think we have a chance of firing it up. One of these plug wires is disconnected and broken. Would you pull the oil? Let's see if we got oil up in there. Drum roll, please. Well, there is oil up in there. When I was pulling this from one house to another, I got a, about a mile down the road before I had left it in gear. So I know that motor was spinning. <laughs> Are you sure you're the one that didn't break the tranny doing that? I'm positive. It was like that when I bought it. Mm -hmm. I guess that's good news to know that there's oil in it and that while it was spinning, maybe it built some oil pressure. But. Well, I'm curious. I'd like to put a battery in it and just see if we can't get it to spin over by the key. Maybe all the wiring's still good. That'd be nice. One way to find out, man. All right. It spins. Hot dang. It sounds a little funky and it feels a little weird. That does not sound good. I don't know why, but it just doesn't. It's got a real bad vibration to it. Maybe that's normal for it. Do you hear that down there though? I hear it, but. Could be a motor mount. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I hear a little slight. Yeah. You want to hit it again? I think it was coming from that side. Huh? I think it was coming from this side. Hit it again.
Go ahead. I think you're all right. Okay. Just the sound of whatever broke in the trans and old motor mounts and whatever. Well, when we get it out of there, we can check for compression on all the cylinders. We can do that now if you really want to. I mean, although we have to, well, getting to them should be fun, but it can be done. Motor spins free, that's huge. All right, well. The motor spins. How about that? It sounds really weird, like one cylinder's way off and motor mounts are broken and the transmission's broken and something's going clankety clankety in there. I didn't hear the clankety Well, when I let off the key and it kept rotating, I heard like a what about like that uh, might have been the starter. Okay, maybe it was. You want to listen from out here? If you think you can fit in there, go well, for it. Mike. It's a little awkward. I think it sounds worse inside than it does out here. What you're hearing in the back is the muffler rattling. Okay, okay. Because I noticed that when I was coming in. And I sound that, and I, I hear that sound that's like the starter kind of grinding at the end of it when you let it off and the Bendix pulls it back. Maybe it the sounds kind of. Is getting bad or it's just corroded or... Bearings in the starter or something are grinding a little bit. Or maybe you're just being paranoid. Yeah, maybe. All right, well, uh, that's really cool. Motor's not seized. Everything seems to be spinning. We know we have a blown up transmission. We need a new mirror, man. <laughs> I guess we can begin the teardown process and maybe before the end of the day, we could potentially drop this whole thing out of here. Usually it's pretty quick, just pulling things apart uh, as opposed to- Connecting everything so that it'll drop, yeah. All right, so what? Yeah, yeah, door's open. I don't have the key in it, it's still doing it. Perfect. You got electrical issues. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, let's start disconnecting stuff. We can get the uh, exhaust disconnected. Um, well, actually, I'm thinking, I think I might want to... If it's we could... 71,400 miles on it. 71,000? 71,000. 492.5. What do you bet that that's actually 170,000? Um... I don't know. We're going to find out. Uh, I wanted to see if we could get a 3D scan of it in the vehicle as it sits. That way we kind of have a reference for these shock mounts, these towers here. When we go to actually start building stuff up in the back of that Festiva, it'd be really nice to be able to get the same angles, the same height, the same distance relative to the center line of everything in the motor and the transmission. And if we could mimic this, the shock tower over here and over here in the back of the Festiva exactly the way it is here. We won't go messing with any of the suspension or any of that geometry. I, I'm not exactly sure whether it makes a difference or not, being that we're taking it from the front end and going into the back end. Um, not a suspension expert at all. A good starting point, then you can compare to where it sets up at original, at, at the end of the project. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, if we have CAD models of it, we could play with it and see if it changes anything. We're going to have to figure out how to lock out the steering. There's a lot to figure out. Let me see if I can't fire up the 3D scanner and see if we can get a, just a basic model of the engine bay here. And uh, then we can start taking things apart and getting it all out.
It is two days later in the afternoon. Dad's at work and we got a lot of work done in the meantime. I took yesterday off. I wasn't feeling too hot, but I'm feeling all right enough today. So we made a bunch more progress. We took a bunch of stuff out of the engine bay, got it all cleaned up and cleared up, got everything disconnected, I believe, including the shocks and the little motor or the motor mount shocks down here. There's another one down here, but it's part of the subframe. I've loosened up all four bolts on the subframe. I think we disconnected the steering column. Yes, we did. It's way down in there. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. We ended up removing the front seat and just kind of tossing it in the back so that I could get up underneath there and disconnect all the pedals and linkages and get that steering column disconnected so we can pull this out. So with that being said, I believe we are ready to finish just undoing a few more threads on the bolts on the underside and hopefully pick this car up and have the subframe, engine, transmission, wheels, all of that just kind of sit right there on those little jack stands. The bolts I'm talking about are right here. There's one on each corner on either side. So hopefully this all works. We got a bunch of really good scan data. Uh, I tried doing a rendering for all this the computer sat here for a couple days and got stuck at 95%. But uh, I think after I did a new scan, everything's coming out all right. There's a lot of data here. But uh, yeah, this is pretty neat. So once we get this all down and the car is off around it, I'll do another scan and uh, hopefully merge the files together. But this way we have all the mount points for our shock towers relative to the motor. So then when we go to put this in the Festiva, we know exactly where everything's supposed to go, almost as if it was still in the Taurus. This thing's a memory hog. It used up all 128 gigs of RAM at one point. 
guess I need more RAM. Well, as long as it finishes. The last one got stuck in 95%. This one looks to be doing better. Need to go knock on some wood. There we go. You can do it. Anyway, we got the motor out. It wasn't too bad. I forgot a couple of electrical connections on the back side here that became a little apparent when I started picking it up and I heard a little cracking. But reached up there, got all those pulled off. So there you have it. The motor is out. You can see the transmission over here, wheels, the, the whole steering assembly. All that's gonna have to come off and we're gonna have to get this thing down to just that frame and get a good scan of that frame. And then uh, get this thing cleaned up, take all the plugs out, do a compression test. That wasn't too, too bad. Just a little bit more work than I was expecting, but all in all, I mean, as long as you have a lift, that, uh, that was pretty straightforward. So I think what we'll do now is call it a day here and uh, get everything packed up. Hopefully the computer finishes rendering. And then tomorrow or Thursday, come back out here, get some more scans done of this, and then figure out exactly how to get this blue car off the lift. I'm not exactly too sure. We don't have front wheels anymore. So that means something's got to support it on the front here that allows it to roll. I have these wheel dollies and we might be able to get some four by fours or some bricks or something and stick it like right underneath there where that subframe would mount to and maybe push it out or maybe just hook it up to the tractor. Maybe I can buy a hitch or something and just weld it right up on here and then drop this down onto the tractor hitch. With my luck, that tractor will flip up though. Uh, maybe just a floor jack or two, just to get it outside the garage and then figure out to, what to do with it when it's out there. Um, not exactly sure. I don't wanna leave this here for too long, but there is still some components that we need off of it. We need to pull all the wiring harness out of it. Not sure how much of that we're gonna use on the Festiva. Uh, probably a lot of it, to be honest. It'd be nice to not have to make a bunch of custom wiring harness stuff. Ow. Custom wiring harness stuff for the project, for all the blinkers and headlights and other connections to the computer. Oh, that reminds me, we gotta make sure we get the computer. It's way up there. Dad said we could just leave it kind of sitting like this for now. And then we gotta get this kind of, <laughs> those dang springs, get this kind of movable somehow some situation. Again, maybe those uh, wheel dollies will help us out here. Uh, we do have the engine hoist. Ooh, maybe that's what we do. Maybe we hook the engine hoist up to the front of the car and support it. And then just kind of move the whole thing out with the engine hoist holding up the front end. Chalk the back wheels in the driveway there. I, I don't know. That's, that's a task for either tomorrow or another day. Uh, my dad said he'd be off on Friday and could give me a hand with all of this. Let's see here. Memory's going down, CPU usage is up. Please, please, please finish. These scans took like 20 minutes to knock out and I'd really like to know that that computer can handle it because I built it specifically for this project. And if that can't handle it, I, I think the 12th gen maxes out at about 196 gigs of RAM if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not trying to buy more RAM for this computer anyway. All right, we're gonna call it a day there and we'll be back in just a sec. All right, we are back. It's been about a week since I was last in the garage. I came down with COVID, spent a week at home, but now we are back out here and I got the entire wiring harness pulled out of the vehicle, everything for the engine and for the body. I don't know how much we're gonna be keeping, but it's all here just in case. The motor has been pulled out. It's on the cradle. It's sitting on some jack stands. That is all good to go. I managed to weld up a tow hitch onto the car and pulled it out into the yard and somebody will come and get that for scrap metal. I just gotta get the title up here, but anyways, the hard part of that is done. Over here is a 1988 Ford Festiva. This car runs and drives. It has a bad fuel pump right now, but we sprayed some starter fluid up in it and it fired right up for a little bit and it actually ran pretty smooth. 
So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take out all the stuff from the back here. All these panels are gonna come out. We're gonna pull out the back seat. We're gonna get all of this cleaned up. And then we're gonna come over here with our scanner and give it a scan. We got the engine in the cradle scanned up. The other scans weren't rendering out quite well enough. I think I set the resolution too high. I uh, backed it down to about a half a millimeter and everything's rendering now. Uh, coming out just fine. I have working models. I took some measurements based off this and uh, it all seems pretty dang accurate. So now that we know all the positions on our subframe here, we'll be able to put this in the car once we've scanned the car and then see what we're going to have to do, what we're going to have to cut, start designing a roll cage and subframe and all that for the back of the Festiva. But yeah, this old car, uh, I got it from my buddy who lived down the street from another buddy and they did a bunch of work on it and got it running. And uh, it's, uh, it's old. Let's see, 1980, that's a year before me, year before I was born. But surprisingly, the dash isn't cracked at all anywhere. The interior's seen better days, but we can make new door cards. The headliner's surprisingly intact. The, uh, the shifter is a little all over the place. <laughs> Needs new bushings. But uh, this is not a bad starting point. It smells exactly like you think it smells. Old country rat, you name it, water damage, whatever. Anyway. Let's go ahead and get started pulling out all this stuff in the back and see if we can't get a good scan into the computer. All right, well, we got the car scanned, uh, well, the back half of it anyways. We got all the seats out and everything. I think I have all the data that I need. The computer's sitting here crunching away. It'll stay at 98% for a little while, but you can kind of see in the fuzzy background there that we got the back half of the car all scanned up, which is really what we need. So now that we have the scans done of the engine and of the car, I need to play around in SolidWorks or Fusion 360 and see how well that engine actually sits up in there, get it where we want in virtual space and then we can design the roll cage and everything else around it. I need to order tubing. I need to order a tubing bender, a tubing notcher, just a lot of tools that we're gonna need to be able to complete this project. It's gonna take me a little while, so the next episode is gonna be a little bit further off. Uh, this project's probably gonna be spread out over the course of this year. This is honestly gonna take a while. I haven't done a lot of fabrication work like this before. I've never bent my own tubing or anything like that. I can, I can model it all day long and I can do the engineering work behind it, but actually doing it is a totally different ball game. So on the next episode, we should have materials ordered. We should have the CAD work done, and then we can go ahead and get started on cutting the back end of the Festiva all apart so that we can get the motor put up in there. And then we can start welding up a, a tube frame and a roll cage and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching the episode. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd appreciate if you could subscribe for me. Maybe this year we can hit a thousand subscribers and uh, go from there. That'd be really awesome. Until next time, y'all have a great time and stay safe and I will catch you later. Bye.